not over seven or eight years old. My father told me about a murder that was committed when he was a young man. Now, it happened in the town adjoining the one where we lived in Ohio. And in those days, a murder was hanged outdoors in broad daylight. And everyone was invited to see the act and all the gruesome details that went with it. There was an eager and an anxious crowd, each pushing to be in at the moment of death. Now, my father managed to get Will in front where he could watch. But when he saw that rope adjusted around the man's neck, well, he could stand no more. And my father turned away his head, and he felt humiliated and ashamed for the rest of his life that he could have had even that much of a hand in killing a fellow man. If my clients are innocent, then other men are guilty of entering the temple of justice and using the laws that were made to guard and protect you and me and these defendants for the purpose of hounding innocent men to a prison pen. And this is not the first time that evil men, men who are themselves criminals, have conspired to use the law to bring righteous ones to death or to jail. Once a young man came into my office and he asked me to defend him on a charge of robbery. He said he wanted to pay a fee, didn't have any money just then, although he did expect he could raise some by that evening. And I told him I thought he'd better get another lawyer because I did not care to accept any money that had been stolen so recently. <laughs> this demand for a decent life, an eight-hour day at a decent wage, is not a demand to shirk work as has been claimed in this case. Now, gentlemen of the commission, there's only one standpoint from which you have the right to approach this question, and that is what will make the best man, the best American citizen to build a nation we'll be proud of. Now, a laborer who asks for shorter hours, he asks for a breath of life, and he asks for the chance to develop the best that's in him. And it's no answer to say that if you give him shorter hours, he will not use them wisely. Our country, our civilization, our race is based on the belief that for all his weakness, there is still in man that divine spark that will make him reach upward for something higher and better than anything he has ever known. This is the man on whose testimony you've been asked to hang Bill Haywood. Gentlemen, I sometimes think I'm dreaming in this case. And I sometimes wonder whether here in Idaho or anywhere in the country, a man can be placed on trial and lawyers seriously asked to take the life of a human being on the testimony of Harry Orchard. For God's sakes, what sort of a community exists up here in Idaho that sane men should ask it? Need I come here from Chicago to defend the honor of your state? Oh, there's no way you can give Haywood back the 18 months he spent in the Boise jail. If a man is so insane that he wants to go out and fight for the poor as Haywood has, and these are the wages he receives today, and that he has received since the time the first foolish man commenced to agitate for the upbuilding of the human race. Ruby and I took a vacation to Palestine. We wanted to see where it all began. And we met an Arab boatman there who offered to row us out to the spot where Jesus walked on the water. All he wanted for this was $15. No wonder Jesus walked. When the Bible says that the morning and the evening were the first day, does that mean anything to you? Were those 24-hour days? No. Any idea how long they were? Oh, you believe that the sun was made on the fourth day. Then how could you distinguish the morning from the evening of the first three days without any sun? Well, the Bible does, your Bible does. Doesn't that bother you? You 12 white men are trying a color man on race prejudice. And you needn't tell me you're not prejudiced because I know better. Not much but a bundle of prejudices anyway. We're prejudiced against other people's color, prejudiced against their religion, prejudiced against the way they look, prejudiced against the way they dress. We're full of prejudice. My only hope, gentlemen, the jury is this. That you are honest enough, strong enough, and decent enough to lay prejudice aside in this case and decide it as you ought to. 
And none of us is unmindful of the public, Your Honor. I've stood here for three months as one might stand at the ocean trying to sweep back the tide. And I hope the seas are subsiding and the wind is falling. And I, I believe they are. But I wish to make no false pretense to this court. Because the easy thing to do and the popular thing to do would be to hang Dickie Loeb and Babe Leopold. Men and women who do not think will applaud and the cruel and the thoughtless will approve. But more and more fathers and mothers who are gaining an understanding and asking questions not only about these poor boys, but about their own. They would join in no acclaim of the death of my clients, and they would ask that the shedding of blood be stopped. 